All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Paul Sloan, who is in Surrey in the UK. How are you doing, Paul? Great, John. Loving it. Yeah, absolutely. And Paul helps busy executives facing impossible challenges to innovate radical solutions using his six step lateral method. And what we're going to talk to about today about today is lateral thinking for salespeople. So Paul, before we, we begin, let's just uh, define lateral thinking in general. Yeah, it's a good question. And lateral thinking is a phrase coined by Edward de Bono yeah. in mm. contrast to conventional thinking or vertical thinking where we build block on block the way we've always approached problems. And lateral means coming at the problem from the side. It means just taking a different approach, an entirely fresh approach. Um, and it's mm -hmm. a generic term for all types of creative thinking techniques. Yeah, and the, and the Edward de Bono book, when was that written? I, uh, 1960s, he wrote that. Yeah, 1960s. And, it was, yeah. Uh, and although he's claimed a lot of credit for it, it was derivative from other people's work as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah. the, the, his early books, I think, are very good. Yeah. Okay. So, so lateral thinking coming at problems um, from different angles as opposed to just, you know, straight on or, or in traditional ways. Why is this important for sales to approach things from a lateral thinking point of view? Well, I've been in sales for many a long year. I was, uh, I went through sales training with IBM mm -hmm. uh, and I was very successful with them. And I was a uh, marketing director, managing director of a software company, was selling a lot of products. I've been selling my services as an independent consultant for the past 20 years. And um, this year has been a really tough year. And, and a lot of things that worked before don't work anymore. Um, and I've had to pivot, as a lot of people have had to pivot. I've tried a lot of things this year. Not all of them have worked. Many of them haven't worked. Um, and I'm still finding my way through this. And I think it's a big challenge for salespeople. Because at the moment, uh, people are cautious. People are hesitant. Customers are. Um, a lot of the assumptions we make about our customers might just be wrong. They're flooded with information. They're flooded with choice. So the salesman's role has changed and the sales professional has a really challenging job to do, I think. Yeah, and it's interesting what you said there about, uh, you know, the changes in, in, in this year, but also in just consumer behavior overall. And the fact is uh, that they do have a lot of information, but to your point is it's information overload in many ways. So the role of the salesperson has actually elevated in some ways because they have that opportunity to really help a prospect or a, or a customer kind of work their way through all this mountain of information and, and focus in on what's important. Absolutely right. The salesman has to be a guide. Mm -hmm. through the mountain of information, the, the jungle of information. But you can't do that until you establish trust. So yeah. the client has to trust you. They don't have to like you, but they do have to respect you and trust you as a professional. And, and that means you have to be honest from day one. Uh, you, you, if, you, if you tell one fib, you've blown your trust. So mm. uh, it, it, it's quite difficult. It's challenging for, for old-fashioned salespeople to adapt, I think. So what are some of the, so you have a whole method around um, lateral thinking. What are some of the steps, the first steps in order to orient your thinking in how you approach problems? Um, so what I recommend is uh, several steps that you take. And I've, I've written down some questions I'm suggesting for salespeople because I thought yeah. this would, uh, we'd discuss this. Uh, and the first is, do I know my target market? Do I really mm -hmm. know my client and his or her needs? And you may think you know them, but the needs that they had last year will be different from the needs they have this year and the needs they have next year. And you've got to constantly go back and just check that your understanding is correct. Yeah, and Another, just just uh, just on that, Paul, I think that's an important point to, to just to highlight for everybody there, because it is we're, we're very, uh, you know, sometimes the temptation is that we we think we know our customers very, very well. Right. And we think we know their needs. Maybe we've been doing this for a while. But the fact is that customer needs and, and, and habits are dynamic, just like everybody else. Plus, as you said, this year, I mean, it could be accelerated. So we have to avoid sort of assuming that you know what's going on with your customer. And you've got to check, check your market, check your target customer on a regular basis to make sure it's still the same. Yeah. And, and one exercise I would recommend for salespeople is this. 
ask the question, what assumptions am I making? Mm -hmm. And just write them down. I'm assuming that my customer wants to survive, that he wants to make a profit, a, a whole bunch of things. Uh, write down the assumptions uh, and then ask this question, what if I'm wrong? Yeah. Or, or to be really uh, provocative, what if the opposite were true? What if the mm. exact opposite were true? Um, you know, when I was working for Ashton Tate in the 1980s, um, we, all of our software, the proprietary code, we kept very, very secret. We didn't let anybody see it. It was the crown jewels. And yeah. it was the most protected thing that we or Microsoft or Lotus had. And a man came along called Linus Torvalds. He said, what if we did the exact opposite? What mm -hmm. if we made software code freely available to everyone and we made open architecture software, uh, um, open source uh, software, and he created Linux. Mm -hmm. And by challenging the basic assumption and going in the absolute opposite direction, he was able to create a huge new market. So yeah. uh, some of the assumptions that have got you to where you are are no longer applicable. And, and just challenging yourself on all those points uh, what if the opposite were true is a very powerful question to ask. Um, and another thing to ask yourself is what new methods can I try? I've tried various methods to reach customers, to appeal to customers, to, to increase my brand, uh, to express the benefits of my solutions. What new methods could I try? And I would encourage your, your viewers and listeners to try something new, two or three things every month. Most mm. of them won't work. Uh, right. If you try safe things, you're not being bold enough. So I'm suggesting you try things which are a bit wacky and some of them mm -hmm. won't work, but occasionally you'll hit on something that does work and then you develop that new approach. Yeah, no, I, I, I love that idea because I, I do think, again, it takes you out of, lifts you out of complacency. It also lifts you out of that feeling of helplessness, like I'm doing all the same things that I've always done and nothing's working. Um, and, and, and as we know, when you try, when you come up with new ideas, as you said, even if wacky ideas, sometimes over time they lead to something else, right? The wackiness yeah. may, it is a starting point, but the actual, um, you know, where you end up is somewhere completely different. But you'll never go on that journey until you start with the throw out every, throw out every idea you can think of. That's right. And that's what I help clients to do. So I work with clients mm. to get their teams thinking in new ways. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. What's the, what's, the next, uh, what's, what's the next step that somebody needs to take? Well, the next step is to keep asking questions. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, there was a survey done uh, years ago uh, of the difference between good salespeople and outstanding salespeople. And they, they uh, assessed the actual technique of a good salesperson and an outstanding salesperson. What they found was a good salesperson would establish a rapport with a client, would ask them a lot of questions, would uncover a need, and then would introduce their product and match the benefits of the product to the, the needs of the customer. And they were successful, they were doing well. And then they looked at what the really outstanding, the top 1% of salespeople did, and they mm. found that they did something a little bit different. They would establish a rapport with the customer, they'd ask them a lot of questions, they'd uncover a need, and then this is where they did something different. Instead of introducing their product, they kept asking questions. Mm -hmm. they, uh, uh, to understand the need in much greater detail, to, to build it into something much bigger, more threatening, more worrisome for the client. Therefore, their proposal was of more value. And mm -hmm. your job as a salesperson, I think, is to keep asking very searching questions, very basic questions to uncover the true needs of the customer. Sometimes the customer doesn't even know them until you help him to understand them. Uh, and then you can find a solution which is more appropriate to those exact needs. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and it's interesting what you say there because yeah, if what often happens is you un uncover a need and dive in immediately with the solution. Now, the problem with it is that we have, we can have plenty of needs in our business, but not all of them are ones that we care to address right now, That's want right. to address or a priority to address. Yeah. At the moment, it's burning issues only that count. <laughs> yeah. Let me give you a, a, a story, a little story, an example. You know, during the, the crash of 2008, 2009, car sales mm -hmm. in the USA went down. They plummeted. Uh, yeah. People couldn't sell cars off the forecourts. Uh, and the various companies tried all the usual methods. We'll have special offers. We'll have extended credit. We'll, we'll, we'll give them a bonus. We'll do free servicing. They tried all of those. Nothing worked. And Hyundai in the USA tried a different approach. So they asked the question, why aren't people buying cars? And they said, because there's a recession. But why is that stopping them? Well, well, they're very nervous. But what exactly are they nervous about? And when they asked that question and they, they kept asking the question, kept delving, they found the real answer was people were worried 
about losing their jobs. And if they lost the job in the recession, they wouldn't be able to keep up their payments on the car. So they said, well, we can cover that risk. We've got financial resources. We can handle that risk for them. And so they came up with an offer which said, uh, if you buy a Hyundai car and you're made redundant from your job in the next two years, you will not suffer. We'll indemnify you against that risk. We'll carry the risk and mm -hmm. you can return the car and uh, no penalty to you whatsoever. Um, and uh, it was successful. They doubled their sales in that period. By asking more searching questions, by understanding the need more completely, they were able to come up with a more appropriate solution for the customer's needs. And that's what yeah. lateral thinking is about. It's about coming at problems from fresh directions based on deeper insights. Yeah, no, and it's true. And it's even during the, the you know, the current uh, pandemic and stuff, you know, it's really harmed a lot of businesses, a lot of sectors. However, there are others that are doing very well. It's funny you should mention the car industry. I mean, car sales are like booming right now. Uh, I was uh, I was at a dealership not too long ago. The 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 guy there told me that uh, they're doing double what they did last year. Well, and this Tesla is after shares being are going through the roof. I don't know about anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, so it's it's a good point. Again, is the fact is to rather than make exceptions or assumptions rather and sort of accept your perceived reality well there's nothing really i can do it's that whole thing of really going and exploring and saying come on there's got to be a solution to it but to your point it all comes from understanding what the fundamental underlying issue is and and the the really really big thing here as you pointed out is it was the fear of losing job it wasn't it wasn't just the surface well it's a recession it was the fear of losing the job yes you've got to uncover the specific need and then you can find an appropriate solution mm -hmm. so um the various techniques you can use i recommend that you deliberately take a different point of view come at the problem from a different perspective and there are techniques in my books to help people do this mm -hmm. and on my my classes uh, and use the random, uh, use a random word, a random input, a random object sometimes just to make you think about things in fresh ways um, and, and do something different every day. Yeah, and I think that's a really important thing for, for salespeople going into 2021 is rather than just harken back sort of pre-pandemic and say, I just hope, well, everything will just revert back to normal. This should be the time to, as you said, to be challenging all assumptions and to be looking at creative ways going forward because everything is going to evolve whether we like it or not. I think the new normal is going to be very different from the old normal. And, and I, I'm smart, but I'm not smart enough to know what it is. So mm -hmm. the, the only way to find out is to explore, to ask questions, to, to establish a rapport with your clients such that they will share with you uh, their concerns and their, their, their worries and, and, and their problems in depth. Mm -hmm. and, and just on that of of uh, of getting a striking up a rapport with your with your customer, a lot of that can be done through intelligent questioning. Yes, in, of course, that's the whole way. But you can't do it face to face anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, you've yeah. got to do it over the telephone or typically over Zoom, uh, mm -hmm. and you've got to get used to that um, as a as a medium. Yeah, and I think that's the other thing is like you got to get used to like switch on your camera. Don't be afraid. It's amazing how there's 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 salespeople out there who are phenomenal. Walk into a room, a networking event, whatever. Ask them to switch on their camera and zoom, and they're like a deer in the headlights. So you got to get you got to get used to to that. And and you can still you can build very very powerful you know connections even even in a virtual setting. I think you just have to. Um, let go of any preconceived notions you have exactly what we were talking about earlier and maybe think out of the box here and think of okay how can i be different on zoom yes exactly right yeah so i think that that's another important thing okay um all of paul's information is going to be below this video uh, but before we go paul please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do so um, I write books of lateral thinking puzzles. I write books on uh, innovation, creativity. Um, I wrote a book called How to Be a Brilliant Thinker. I wrote a book called Think Like an Innovator. Um, and uh, they're very popular. And I, I've got a lot of podcasts. I've got videos. I did a TED, TEDx talk. Um, in fact, I've done two TEDx talks. Uh, the one you'll like best is called Are You Open Minded? And uh, if you search on YouTube for Paul Sloan TEDx, you'll find that there. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I would really encourage uh, people to check out the, the books and the tools and puzzles that, uh, that Paul has, because I do think, as we've been discussing, I do think you could do yourself a massive favour uh, going into 2021 and just really start to come at things from different angles, because the people, the people who will be successful, as in the Hyundai um, example you used earlier, will be the ones who really drill down and really understand what's going on, because there isn't one one size fits all issue that's facing everybody. It's not just, you know, you can say, well, it's the pandemic. Okay. That affects different people in different ways, different businesses in different ways. So, uh, John, have we got time for a little lateral thinking puzzle? Let's go. Let's do it. A man was driving down a road. He passed a sign. It said speed limit 40. He drove a little further. He passed a sign. It said speed limit 30. He carried on driving down the road. He came to a sign, it said, speed limit 20. He drove on, he came to a sign, it said, speed limit 10. What did the next sign that he came to say? Stop. No. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone said stop. <laughs> it didn't say stop. He said, so speed limit 40, speed limit 30, speed limit 20, speed limit 10. What did the next sign that he came to say? I don't know, you got me here. This next sign that he came to said, Welcome to Speed Limit. <laughs> so, <laughs> very good. The yeah, point about the story that. is that you make an assumption, and it's a very reasonable assumption that speed mm -hmm. limit is miles per hour or kilometers per hour. But if you saw San Diego 40, San Diego 30, San yeah. Diego 20, San Diego 10, you, you'd know. Yeah. And there is a yeah. little town in Arkansas called Speed Limit. There is. Actually, there is. I just made that up. Yeah, well, there, sh well, there should be. Come on. There should be. Anyway, that's <laughs> the sort that. of thing that I get people thinking about. No, and I hope people take that away. I mean, use that. There you go. Look at that. You got something for, for, uh, for the holiday season, a little puzzle <laughs> to throw out there that uh, makes itself very popular at the... Uh, at your family ga gatherings and look at that it's a it's a g-rated uh, puzzle too which is <laughs> listen paul this has been great thank you for that um, now i'm going to approach everything totally differently now because uh, you caught me out in that one which was great uh, my name is john golden sales pop online sales magazine pipeliner crm see you all again soon thank you <laughs>